Hi, welcome to the Moons of Jupiter Lab. Um, this is Annette and Austin, and I guess we'll just start. Okay, so before we start, the purpose of this lab is to find the mass of Jupiter. So you're going to open up the revolution of Jupiter's moons. Okay, and you're going to go file, log in, and then ask for a student name, but you're just going to skip that and press OK. And press OK again. Okay, so this brings you to the actual lab. You're going to go file, and then run. It's going to ask for the date um, right here. Just use the um, default date that it's already set in, so just press OK. Um, okay, so this you might see through our telescope. Um, and these dots are the Galilean moons. A fun fact is that Jupiter almost had enough mass to have its own solar system. Jupiter has 63 of its own moons. Only four were big enough for Galileo to see through his telescope. He saw that the stars were changing their positions around Jupiter. He then realized that these weren't stars, but they were actually moons. Now we're going to turn on the animation. You're going to press File, Features, Animation, Use Color ID, and Show Top View. Then you're going to press OK. So, um, this is the, area of view, the aerial view of what we're seeing here, so you can see it more clearly of what moons are where. So you're going to press the C-O-N-T, and it's going to rotate. Um, it's going to show kind of what it shows in the sky. And so, now we're going to record. Um, first, you're going to well, stop the animation. You go File, Timing, and then you're going to change the observation step hours to 12. And this just tells us that it's going to record our moons every 12 hours. So you're going to press OK. OK, so now you're going to click and drag um, to the first moon closest to Jupiter. And you can see on this screen that it's the pink one. So you're going to go over here. And then you can even kind of go inward if you can't see it. But we're just going to stay outward. Um, and there you go. Make sure that it's circled on this screen. And so just that you know that you clicked on the right moon. OK, so then you're going to press move this over a little. You're going to press record. And the first moon is low, and you can see it right here. Um, you're going to record the Jupiter diameters, which is right here, x equals 1 west. Um, and then you're going to press OK. OK, so then you're going to do the same for the next one. And this next one is um, white, I think. I can't really tell the color. <laughs> so you're going to go and get exactly on that moon. So there you go. It's Circled over here, press record, and then it shows it right here. Press OK. And then the next one is green, so here's my green one. And that's the name of the moon, and those are your diameters. And also anything to the left of this, the left of Jupiter on this screen is going to be east. You see the little east thing, and anything to the right is going to be west. And they've already plugged that in for us. But if it isn't on your software, then you're just going to want to type in the W or type in the E. Okay, so then press OK. And we have one more moon. It's the yellow one um, way out here. Go on it. It's Callisto. Press record. And there you go. So, OK. So now that you've recorded your first set of the moons, or the first time that you've recorded the moons, you're going to want to do this process again. And what you're going to do to do that is you're going to press Next. And once you click Next, this changes the universal time. And we've already clicked Next um, when we weren't recording, so we're not going to click it again, otherwise we'll mess up the lab. But on your screen, you're going to go ahead and click the Next, and then you're going to see a change in the universal time. So you're going to record the same stars once again, and we'll do that just to show you. So you're going to take the pink one, Ooh, right on top of Jupiter here. <laughs> so there's our pink one. Um, Okay, you're going to press record. All of our stuff's recorded. Recorded. Press OK. Then you're going to go ahead and do the white one. Press record. OK. Zoom out a little so you can see. Then you're going to do the green one. 
press record. Ah. Nice. Okay, and then you're going to press the green one, press record. Okay, and then the last one, record. Okay. And there you go. So you're going to do this process 25 times, or roughly, maybe, yeah, about 25 times, and just keep on pressing next and record the stars again and again. All right, so now we have those 25 points recorded, or the data points. We can look at that by going to File, Data, Review, Edit, Print, and you can just see uh, the four moons right here, and uh, Julian date, and all the data. We don't really need that right now, but we are going to put it into a graph. So go to File, um, Data, Analyze, and here you can see kind of curvature the moon's traveling and like example right here there was no data point because either it was behind Jupiter or there was a cloud so it's not a really big deal um, you can look at each individual moon we'll go to IO and I mean looking after off of this you really can't get any data because it's all jumbled up so go to Ganymede and this has a nice kind of curvature to it so we can start measuring off of this one um, again it's going to have some missing spots but just don't worry about that so we're going to go data plot fit sine curve and we're going to set the oh, we're going to set the parameters so for the t0 that's just whenever um, the graph crosses the x axis so just kind of hold down on the mouse you can see down here uh, the numbers will change so just try to line it up find an easy point and say right there now we're going to type in the x uh, mod of what is it the julian date um, right into the t0 so 239.1 So to do the period, or to figure out the number of days, um, we need to figure out how how long it takes to do exactly one cycle. So you can choose, your graph might, I mean it might drop down here and go up, but where we do find two peaks or two troughs, they're distinct, and click on the second one, and we're going to look right here, so 240.9. Now what we're going to do is subtract um, this whatever this peak right here is from this to figure out um, that dis or the time. So open up a calculator or use a calculator. Do 240.9, and we'll check out this one. We'll say it's right around there. So 233.7. Nope, messed that up. Okay, so we'll subtract 233. So it gives us roughly a period of about 7.2 days. Uh, later on, we'll kind of adjust that, but it'll just give us a starting position. Amplitude, all you're going to do is just find out the highest um, crest of this. So we're going to look at the right here down to Y. And that says 7.49. Go down to the bottom. And roughly, we'll say it's uh, in between, we'll say it's 7.50. Alright, once you have these three entered, go ahead and hit OK. And this blue line, the curvature that came in, that's just what we put in. It's kind of guessing. Um, you can adjust everything to make it match. So go ahead and go through that. Get it about as exact as you can. So just, you have T0, T0 period and amplitude. So you can change every bit of it. Okay, now that you've gotten 
uh, this graph all filled out, you have the T0 period and amplitude. You can go ahead and open up the spreadsheet that Burke has put into your um, your network folder, and you're going to see this obviously. And again, just like in the last um, the last lab, we're going to enter in formulas to help us do the math, make it a little bit easier. Um, yeah, so we're going to look. We're just going to do Ganymede, or I'm just going to do Ganymede. You guys are going to do all four. So we're just going to find the period or Earth days, and found that right here. So 7.135. Just type that in. And now to get this into Earth years, we're going to make a formula, and basically all we're going to do is divide this by 365. So to do your formula, remember to do equals to start off the formula. You can click on cell C10. So it shows cell C10. Now we're going to do divided by 365 and hit enter. Now this is how many years. So that's good. Now to find the radius, what we're going to do is we're going to square the period. So you can just open up calculator, use your phone or whatever. And we're going to do 7.135. I don't have a square button, so we'll just multiply it by itself. 7.135. So now we have 50.908. Um, that's not our answer. Well, not yet. So now we're going to take this number that you squared and. Let's see. If we're going to want to take the, we're going to use a radical calculator. So just Google, uh, or I'm sorry, we're going to take the cube root of that. So you can Google like cube root calculator. It was the first link you can click on. Um, now we're going to punch in this number, 50.908. 50.908. And it gives us 3.706. We're going to go back to Excel, type in, where is it? Three point seven zero six. Nope, that's not it. So three point seven zero six. Okay. So to find the radius of the orbit in astronomical units, we're going to do one more formula. So do equals. We're going to use cell E10. So you can just click on it and divide it by 1050. You can just hit enter, and there's your formula. Now to find the mass of Jupiter using all this information. Do our last formula. Do equals and click on cell F10. Now we're going to raise that to the third power. So use your little caret symbol. That's a six. Um, use that and do a three because we want to raise it to the third power. We're going to divide that by cell D10. So going back to period. Again, we're going to raise that to the third power, and you can hit enter. So that's showing the mass of Jupiter in solar masses, so we're comparing it to the sun. So that's why you get a pretty small number, but in, in reality it's quite big. And what you can do, um, since you have to do the rest of these, is take each formula and you can drag it up so it's going to copy and paste that same formula into each of these boxes so you don't have to type it all over again, you just have to punch in the numbers So just do that, do the same thing for, I'll just do it and alright so now you should be good, you can punch in any number 
and it will calculate. So now with these questions we have just I mean <clears throat> so you calculate are you gonna calculate the mass four times in like how precise is your data? Like were there any errors or just see how much these numbers vary from moon to moon. And once again how precise was it? Just show I me mean, like the maximum number and the minimum number for the mass. And if it wasn't very good, if you had maybe say this one up here was a huge number and this was a small number, say like what was the reason why that could have happened? And we're going to calculate the average mass of Jupiter. So down here is our last formula. So go equals, and we're going to type in average, all caps. There it is. So click on the average, and now we want to use cells um, see, it? G8 through G11. So G8 and nope through G11. So now it's going to know to add these up and find the average. Do end parentheses. Nope. End parentheses. And hit enter. And once again, we have to have all these numbers in. But when you get those other four, sorry, other three, you will find the average. And so let's see. The generally accepted value for the mass of Jupiter is. 0 0.00095 solar masses. Now that's just saying compare your answer to this because um, that's the actual mass technically. So just see how accurate you were. And if it wasn't very accurate, explain some reasons. Maybe you didn't click in the right spot when you were measuring the moons or something like that. So that wraps up this lab. Hopefully it helps. And yeah.